Today we're gonna to talk about whether or not posh live shows are actually affecting your sales. Do you have so slow sales and are you thinking it's all because of posh live shows? Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Leanna and I did a bit of a deep dive into some numbers. I found this really great website called similarweb.com where you can look at the traffic numbers for any website that you want. So I did a bit of a dive on Poshmark Canada, Poshmark US, eBay, and on whatnot. And I came up with some really interesting observations I think that's a good way to put it because I mean this is not scientific in any way shape or form but the numbers are really fascinating to me so posh live shows are in our face it's all about the posh live shows well that's all we're hearing about they're being promoted and promoted and promoted I know that all the posh party lives that have been happening across both Canada and the US have been focusing on the live shows they're really hyping it and you have to keep that in mind when you start to think about okay is this affecting my sales does the hype actually mean that this is what is happening so remember that some of the numbers first of all first of all whatnot came along in I believe 20 I don't even remember when but it hasn't been along around for a while but a lot of people were going to whatnot, they were leaving Poshmark, they were leaving whatever to try live sales. So Poshmark came out with their own live sales so that people wouldn't leave the platform. Totally makes sense to me. In um, March of 2023, so just last month, whatnot had traffic of 3.2 million visits to that website, which is, you know, for us here in Canada, that's a lot. Um, in the States, that number is really, really low. It's very tiny, but whatnot goes across the border. So 3.2 million visits to that website. And visits mean anybody that opens the website up, uh, uh, opens the website up or opens the app up. So it's just a visit. What I found interesting about whatnot is that the duration of the visit was a little bit longer. It was almost seven minutes. And the pages that they visited was seven and a half. So that was a really good indication that people were staying on the app. The bounce rate, which is when a bounce is when somebody opens the app and then automatically goes away. They only view one page. So on whatnot, the bounce rate was only 25%. So people were staying on it longer and visiting more pages. So to me, that means they're visiting more shows. So Poshmark came out with their own because why not tap into that market? Of course. So we're going to focus on Poshmark US because the numbers are much, much bigger. And I am finding that the complaints about slower sales are coming mainly from Posh US. Here on Posh Canada, I'm not seeing any significant drop in my sales. In fact, I'm seeing increases in my sales. But Posh live shows are not nearly as popular on Posh Canada. In fact, there are times of the day where there are no Posh shows going on at all. I have not experienced that yet on Posh US. But anyway, Poshmark Canada, we're going to talk about their numbers. So, sorry. <laughs> on Poshmark Canada, in January of this year, we had 3.9 million visits. So it's not a huge, we're not a huge market here. We have less population. The interesting thing about this is that for January, February, March, we increased. So there was no dip at all. February was 4.1 million and March was 4.3 million. So we've been increasing. And this is a point I want to make about that is that we've been increasing and Posh US did not. So that's part of it. Um, our duration of, of time was five minutes, but the bounce rate is 40%. That means people are opening the app and, and leaving. So they're not spending nearly as much time on Poshmark Canada. Um, this is an interesting number because you know what? All the sellers have to be on the app, right? So a lot of these numbers are sellers going in and sharing their closet, making offers, responding to offers, responding to questions. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so we're gonna focus on Posh US because shows are much more popular on Posh US. There's always a show going on. I have not experienced yet where there's no shows whatsoever. And being up at 3.30 some mornings, I go in and I check and there's still shows going on. 
But here's what I want to talk about. First off and foremost, in January, Posh US visits was at 64.8 million visits. 64.8 million, big number. But in February, it dropped to 56.2. Now, February is a shorter month. It's like down two or three days, depending on the month. So really and truly, that's an 8.6 million view drop. That absolutely would affect your sales. If not as many people are visiting the platform, your sales will absolutely reflect that. Now, in March, they did come up to 61 million. So at least it increased. But, you know, with... March being a longer month, that was to be expected. But from January to March, the drop was 3.8 million. I think that has much more to do with the sales being slower than anything else. If the platform is not getting the traffic, if they're not getting the people on the app, they're getting less buyers. Across the board, I think this is absolutely true. And I think this is what's happening for the most part with your sales. However, let's talk about posh shows. All right, so I did some research. I kept looking at shows. I went into shows. I counted how many shows. I did this a couple of times during the day, and I came up with a general type of number that what I think is generous to say this is how many people go into shows. Now, you all know that I don't stay up late at night, so I don't really get that 9, 10 o'clock sort of piece of the puzzle, but I, I would understand that it would be much bigger than in the morning or in the afternoon. So that being said, I checked it out. I think this is the first one at 7.30 a.m. Um, at that time, Posh Canada had no shows, just as comparison. Posh US had a total of 55 shows at 7.30 in the morning. I think it was a Wednesday. But in this, and this is where the numbers matter, out of that 55 shows, only two had over 100 people visiting or participating. And out of that 55, only two had over 50 people. So like really and truly, I mean, that's only four shows, four shows out of 55 that had over 50 people participating. Um, there was 43 shows that had under 20. 43 of those 55 had under 20. 37 of them, 37 out of 55 shows had under 10 people participating. To me, that's not a lot of people. And honestly, I mean, we're getting this hype, right? Oh, you gotta do shows because of sales and you're getting all this attention. And if you look at the shows that are going on, yeah, there are a few shows getting attention. Absolutely, there's shows making sales. But there's more shows that have three or four people in them and they're not doing anything. So keep that in mind. Now, that's only 7.30 in the morning, so who knows? I did check it again at 1.30 on Thursday, and as comparison, Poshmark Canada had only seven shows going on, and out of those seven, only one had over 20 people in it. That's it. The rest were all under under 20. So one, there's three between 10 and 20, and there was three under 10 people participating. All right, Posh US. This is this the numbers excite me so much. At this time, at 1:30 on a Thursday, Posh US had a total of 74 shows going on. 74, which is amazing. But with those 74 shows, only two had 100 participants. That's just just two out of 74 shows. What else do I have? So. The shows that had more than 50, so between 50 and 99, were only three. Shows that had between 20 and 49 people were only 20 shows. And the majority, 49 shows, had less than 20 people in it. So even though we're hearing about shows and shows and shows, the amount of people that are in these shows, that's not millions and millions of people, okay? I'm going to say in a generous way a couple of things. So first off, with Posh US having 61 million visits during that month, that worked out to be about 1.967 per day. 1.9 million people per day would visit the app. Let's be generous and say there was a thousand shows um, 
created and entered into on any given day. We'll say a thousand with an average of about, let's say 50 people. That's being generous, 50 people. So that's only 50,000 people participating in shows every single day. 50,000 people out of almost 2 million. This makes the percentage of people going into these shows something like 2.5%. That is it. 2.5% of the visits to the Poshmark US app on any given day go into shows. Now, you go into shows and number one, you have the seller in the show, so there's some of it gone of that percentage. You also have people that just go in to support their friends or to visit with their friends or to just check it out. Not everyone is buying from those shows. Not everybody is um, bidding and counter bidding and doing all that. That's not happening in every single item on every single show. So when people start to talk to me or they start to vent that their sales are so, so slow, it's all Posh Live's fault. Um, I'm going to say no, it's, it's not for a couple of reasons. Number one, the numbers to me tell me that it's not their fault. 2.5% is minuscule. It's not very much. It could be affecting your sales. I'm not saying it's not, but instead of it being this much, it might only be this much. Okay. If you are experiencing a huge downfall in your sales, maybe it's because the platform's not getting the traffic it used to. And you know what, especially in February when it dipped eight, per, eight point whatever per a million people, that's a big dip. In my books, that's a big dip. So why are you not getting sales? If it's not Posh Live's fault, and I know that when sales slow down, sometimes we try to see what outside of what outside of ourselves is going on like did they change something did they bring something in new is the economy sucking is you know is all these other factors and yeah they do play a part in our sales but i want to say that really and truly when your sales start to slow down the first place to look is you it's you and your business and your practices so for instance, last week I listed 50 items. I was like gung-ho, woo-hoo-hoo, and my sales were really good. This week, I'm not even at half of that. I've had some issues this week. I hadn't been sleeping. It's a beautiful, you know, the weather's been absolutely gorgeous, and I just haven't put the work in. My sales have slowed down. So I can sit back and go, yeah, I really need to list more, and I know this, and I'm going to spend the weekend photographing and getting a good head start on next week so that I can get back into that routine and back into listing more items so that my sales will reflect it. I always look to me first, am I doing the work? Am I actually getting items that people want to buy? Checking your comps, checking your sell through rates are absolutely key in order to get sales. I can find the best brand in the world and I can check the sell through rate and there's 10 listed and only two have sold, I'm not gonna buy that item. Unless I can get it really, really inexpensively and I can undercut the market. So if I pick up a good brand at the bins that only has, like has 10 listed and two sold type of thing, but I can get it for a dollar, I may just pick it up because everybody else has their items listed at 50 and I can list mine at 40. I wouldn't go too much lower than that because you don't want to affect the market that much and you know the race to the bottom which is when people keep undercutting the market price just so they can make a sale i'm not suggesting you do that i'm suggesting that if you have the ability to have a lower cost of goods to put that into your price and hopefully make the sale but Honestly, you need to check the sell-through rate. And this is something that I am learning to do more and more. For instance, I was at um, Value Village on Tuesday, which was my Seniors Day 30% off. There is a brand of jeans called Judy Blue that a lot of people have talked about. They're like, oh yeah, you gotta get this brand. It sells really fast, blah, blah, blah. I found a pair of Judy Blue jeans. They wanted $10.99, plus I had the 30% off, so that's what, like seven something which is not bad for a pair of jeans, but they were a size zero. So 
First of all, small sizes do not sell very fast for me. They're more long tail items. And I already have a few pairs of jeans like that in my closet. I checked the sell through and there were four listed in that size and there was only four sold. So for me, I was like, I already have a couple of small sizes of jeans that I have in my closet that aren't moving. I think I would just leave these behind. I had to make that decision, even though I really wanted to pick up that brand because I've never found it before. But I did my search, my, my sell through rate and my comp search, and I made that decision like a good business person should. Anyway, check your comps, check your sell through rate. If you are finding that you are doing everything you're supposed to be doing, especially on Poshmark and you're, you know, you're sharing and you're sending out offers, being proactive is really, really good for making sales. You're selling, you're listing what you should be, all that stuff is tick, 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 and you're still not making sales. I would suggest maybe broadening your categories. Go into a part of the thrift store, like the menswear section if you've never done it, and take an hour and go through, I don't know, their jeans or their shirts, and do your comp search and your sell through rate and have more variety in your closet because that could help boost sales because that will help bundles. It's like, oh, you know what? There's that man's shirt. Oh, I like that, but let's me, let me save some shipping. Let me go through the women's as well. Having variety, I think, helps in your closet. If you still are experiencing slow sales, I'm really sorry about that because it does happen, you may want to broaden your horizons with platforms. Cross-listing to other platforms will get more eyes on your items. And I bring this up because eBay, I gotta get my book back because I put it down, eBay traffic numbers. So eBay.com, that's what I looked up. Even though I'm Canadian, we predominantly list on eBay.com. It's just what we do. In January, eBay.com, 753.7 million visits. That number alone just blows my mind. They, of course, went down. They went down a lot. In in I gotta double check that because that seems a lot. Because in February they went down to 654 million. That's a huge drop. So I think there was something going on. Like maybe it was the um. I, well, I can't think of the word. Every video. Oh my god. Um. The economy <laughs> that could have been happening in February in the States um, in March the traffic was 731.9 million visits to ebay.com that number alone means that that market is huge and you know what if you want to start on eBay you can start on eBay Canada and list to the States as well like because they have access and just do Canada post until you learn it is more expensive but you can check out cross-border shippers, absolutely. Um, I am working on a shipping with a shipping with eBay, shipping on eBay uh, video. It's not something I do a lot of because Paul's already put in our shipping um, protocols. So I just have to click, okay, it's gonna weigh this much and that's all I have to do. He set all that up though. I had nothing to do with that. So we might have to get him back in here to talk about that. Anyway. Um, the duration of visits was almost seven minutes again on eBay. So that's really good. That's more like two minutes more than Poshmark. The bounce rate on eBay.com is only 37%. So people are going on to eBay. They're looking at more pages. They're spending more time. That means more people can have the possibility of seeing your items. So checking out different platforms to get more eyes on your items will help your sales. I know for me that even though that I have Posh US and I have Posh Canada and we have eBay, we have Etsy, we have uh, Vinted, which doesn't do anything, but anyway, we don't necessarily focus on e Etsy and Vinted because they're just our, you know, we might cross list over there and we might not. We do focus on the three, Poshmark Canada, Posh US and eBay.com. Those are, we focus individually, but they're also about the bigger picture. So even though I know right now my Posh US closet is low, but it's fairly normal. This, I think I had a really great month in January with Posh US, and then it went back to what I consider normal for it. 
So I haven't seen a huge slowdown in that sense. To me, it's very normal, but it's nowhere near what Posh Canada is. But I don't worry about it so much because it's the overall big picture. How are my sales overall on both platforms for me and on eBay? And we look at our monthly numbers overall to help us determine whether or not we're being successful. So keep that in mind as well when you are doing or when you're thinking your sales are so slow if you do cross list look at the bigger picture always so yeah that's it i found the numbers really really interesting and i hope there weren't too many numbers the website i went to was similarweb.com if you want to check that out um to see if you can figure out numbers yourself if the platform is getting lower traffic, that will affect your sales much more than a handful of people getting a few more people into their live shows. If you haven't done live shows yet, um, give them a try if you feel like it. I don't think they are the be all and end all of reselling. I think they are here to stay, especially for the near future until they can figure out whether they are actually making them money or not. Um, remember that right now we're being just blasted with live shows live shows live shows and the people having them are getting promoted and promoted and promoted keep that in mind that a lot of that is hype go in at any time of the day check out the shows see how many people are actually in there if you want to join a show or two that helps with your marketing they say i don't know i go in once in a while just to sort of see what's up I also go in, I'll go in at the beginning of a show and just sort of check out what they have for sale, especially if it's a, they have a list already. The run and pass shows are a little bit different, um, but I will check them out and I will look at what has sold. And there's not nearly as many sales as you may think. Keep that in mind. Check it out yourself. See what you observe. See if you think I am totally off my rocker. Um, but yeah. <laughs> That is it for today. I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend. Um, it's supposed to be a nice weekend here. Paul and I are celebrating two years of being in this house, of moving across our province. And we are going out for a really nice dinner on Saturday, which we're, I'm excited about. It's something we don't do normally. So I'm happy to do that. Anyway, everybody have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye.